You know what would go great with this coffee? A plum tort. That's the intro. Hello everybody, my name is Vaughn. I am a video journalist for NYT Cooking. And today, I'm gonna to be making one of, I think I say this every time, but this time I really mean it. This is probably the most like sacred NYT cooking recipe. Today I'm gonna to be making the original plum tort. And I'm gonna pick and choose some of my favorite suggestions and amendments from readers. I'm gonna make it maybe once, twice more and have a big plum tort party after that. So let's get bacon. I'm going to start by preparing my plums, just so I have them off to the side. So you use plum halves, or really whatever fruit is in season. So this recipe calls for 12 pitted and halved plums. There's no way that 24 halves of plums are gonna fit into this thing. So use your best judgment. If you buy too many plums, that's not a bad problem to have. So I'm going to just have these, put them off to the side before I get going with my cake batter. Butter goes in. The recipe will say three quarters to one cup sugar. A lot of that depends on how ripe or naturally sweet your fruit is. It won't change the chemistry of the bake too terribly much if you do three quarters cup to one cup. Kick her into high gear. Now in a lot of cake recipes, I would venture to say most types of cake recipes, this is where you would then add your like eggs and your vanilla. Here, the recipe calls for you to just kind of dump everything in at once. Flour, baking powder, a nice little pinch of salt. I'm gonna start on low, just kind of let it go for a minute. You don't want to over mix, but I am gonna let it kind of get well incorporated. So I just used a little offset spatula to kind of smooth it all out. You don't want to press the plums into the batter itself because there is a lot of like leavener in there. It is going to rise, it's going to puff up. So you just kind of nestle the plums. Squeeze some lemon on top and then granulated sugar and some cinnamon, just a whisper. I'm going to put it in the oven for about an hour. The Plum Tort is a recipe that was published in 1983 and ran every single summer after that from 1983 to 1989. Then in 1990, the editors of the time said, you know what, enough is enough. We're gonna run this one last time. People were outraged. A lot of people had some very colorful things to say. I have some real fun ones right here. A reader in Terrytown, New York said, the appearance of the recipe, like the tort itself, is bittersweet. Summer is leaving. Fall is coming. That's what your annual recipe is all about. Don't be grumpy about it. Perhaps, one New Yorker wrote, it has become the adult version of September's shiny new notebook for school. So it was a very beloved recipe, and when this recipe went away, people were very sad about it. Which is where we get comments like, who do you think you are? Take your tort and shove it. That's a fun one. Anyway, while my original plum tort bakes, I'm going to do some variations. For this first variation, I'm going to use browned butter. The brown butter is only going to like add this enhanced nutty flavor. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my butter on the stove, wait for those fast, really sputtery bubbles, and then once they start to subside, I know that a lot of the moisture is cooked out of the butter. That's when it's becoming more viscous and the milk solids are starting to brown. And I'm gonna actually remove that from the stove top and I'm gonna put it in an ice bath stir it around in the ice bath, and then it kind of becomes more of that softened butter consistency that we used for the original recipe. I'm gonna zest my lemon before I squeeze it on top. Lemon zest is delicious in a lot of things. I think it'll pair really nicely with that fruit. A lot of readers suggested that, said it was delicious. And then another big ingredient change up was instead of the cinnamon on top, to do cardamom. So I'm gonna use some cardamom. I'm gonna use a cast iron skillet. I think that a cast iron skillet is something that a lot of people have. Not a lot of people have a spring form pan, so we're gonna bake it in here and see how it turns out. Cool, so let's get going.
ready to go in the oven for an hour. I read a lot about using alternative flours. So for this variation, I'm going to change out a half cup of the all-purpose flour for semolina. I did see that some people had some great success with olive oil for our dairy-free friends out there. So I feel like the semolina and the olive oil is gonna give it kind of this like Italian countryside. It's giving call me by your name. It's giving like Oliver and Elio like eating a plum tort by the pool. This is my fantasy plum tort. Wow, look at all my children. They look good enough to eat. So let's cut into them, shall we? Oh my God. It's so good. The texture is so great. The sugar on top, gives it a little crunch, that cinnamon is like, oh, what is that? Is that cinnamon? And then the plums. This is something that makes the fruit the star. I'm very excited about this one. This is the brown butter with lemon zest, the turbinado sugar on top, and baked in a cast iron skillet. Holy Moses, wow. It's really good. The lemon zest adds like this brightness. The brown butter adds this nuttiness. The turbinado sugar on top makes it even crunchier than the original. It's extremely good and it baked up really well in the cast iron. Okay, this is our olive oil semolina one. This is my, my Italian fantasy plum tort. Wow. That one's really good. The olive oil really comes through. The semolina adds this like really nice bite to the overall texture of everything. And the fruitiness of the olive oil makes this really sing. I kind of love all of them. I think that my ultimate version could be the cast iron version, just cause I like brown butter, I like lemon zest, I like turbinado sugar. But this one is also fabulous and you can never go wrong with the original. The beauty of recipes is that they are living entities that people can and should adapt to their tastes. If there is a recipe in the NYT cooking database that is like meant for people to add their personalities into it, it is this recipe. This is one of those that takes on many lives of its own and it works with any fruit too so you can make it year round. It is the perfect recipe, full stop. That's it, that's the video.